Well, other huge pick me up. Talk to me more about this. But do you remember when Soro got involved? Remember, oh do you remember goodness. when you reached out to them in the first place? Yeah. So I reached out to them actually back in like January of 2020 for my other screenplay. Um, and we had like started talking about it, but they wanted to know like what, who I had in mind for directors and I hadn't gotten that far yet. So the conversation had kind of been put on hold. And then once we made this, I got in contact with him again saying like, Hey, Scott, uh, Christopherson with Soro Films. I just said like, Hey, I have another screenplay. If you're interested, it's like tiny road trip comedy pandemic. Mm-hmm. Let's just chat. Um, and he was interested. And we had already, like, we were in pre-pro at this point. We were in production at this point. We just couldn't, we, we were on a train that had no time for anyone to even, like, hop on. Yeah. Because we got to a point where we were just like, if we don't make this movie right now, Mm -hmm. we don't submit it to festivals. We don't want to submit it to festivals for next year after the pandemic or whatever happens. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's in the middle of an eight-year pandemic. We didn't know. Right. But we were like... As far as relevancy goes for this tiny little film, like now or this never. might be like the only time we want to do something like this. And that's what I would tell uh, first time filmmakers as well, is that like when you're waiting for someone else to come on board, I guarantee you, your project will look much more interesting when you're already making it or mm-hmm. when you've made it. And that's just the truth of it. Everyone was always telling me like, oh, it's the chicken or the egg, right? Like. You right. need to, like, have funding before you can, you know, make something. But, like, people don't want to give you money until you've made something. or right. You know, and so I was so tired of that that we were just like, okay, we're going to make it either way. We're going to make it with our budget. But then once we had it and it was kind of leaving the ground, I think that's what actually, like, attracted any eyes to it was that it was actually getting made. And it wasn't just being, like, cooked up in our, you know, our office for 10 years. Right. I think there's an energy to momentum. There and is. And it's exciting to other people. I know I'm excited by it when I see it too. I'm like, well, I want to, that's moving. I want to yeah, get on that exactly. moving thing. Yeah. So we ended up pitching to Soro um, during a lunch break uh, while we were in production. And it was the it was the worst pitch I think I've ever been a part of in terms of like how it got started. <laughs> I forgot about that. It just like our computer had crashed. And so I was restarting it while we were on a phone call with them. And it took like 20 minutes for that computer to start. And we were like already crunched for time because this was during a lunch break. But we were trying to impress these people saying like, please invest in our film. Yeah, <laughs> our tiny film. I so promise far has been we have our crap hell. together. <laughs> and but we can't get this computer started. Um, but it ended up going well. We talked to them about just like, yep. This is the script. These are the characters. This is the vibe. We know it because we are literally making it Mm -hmm. like we know what this film needs to look like. Do you want in? And uh, end of that day. Right. We we were filming the windmill Mm. stuff. Yeah. Or no, we were going to the uh, side of the road for the um, biker stuff for the biker stuff. Yeah. Once you pour all the water on my face. We were heading to that place and we got the email saying that they wanted in. Mm -hmm. And that was like, like, gosh, that just elevated the whole experience to a new level because we we knew then like breath of fresh air. We just knew like, okay, we don't have to be um, asking people for favors now. We can actually pay them a normal day rate. That was my first thought was like our crew must feel so much more excited to be on a set knowing that they can make their actual rates. Mm -hmm. And then also knowing like, we can afford a post production process and we might actually Which we be had able barely thought about. We hadn't even thought about that. Mm-hmm. It was really you were our post production. That was right. what we had and thought. Troy. Troy was going to mm-hmm. do DIT and he was going to do all of the graphics by himself. <laughs> For every phone call. Yeah. Green screening and, and all of that, which is just insane. I, I Absolutely mean, we insane. would have never gotten it done in time, no, just knowing yeah. what, what we know now. But at the time, we were scrappy and we were working hard. But knowing that we had this budget now that was afforded to us to to take our film to an actual, like, doable level at this timeline, um, I think just, like, revved us up. It also gave us even more accountability of knowing, mm. like, we we need to finish this film now, not just for ourselves. But for these other people who believe in it and who are putting a stake in it as well. Yeah. Um, I think it just like definitely took us to to that next phase. And we ended up being able to afford an awesome graphics team mm-hmm. that got us across the finish line for our um for our Sundance deadline at least. Extremely efficiently and kindly and patiently. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were incredible. Mm-hmm. Heck video. Yeah, heck is video. Incredible. Mm-hmm. Um and I, on top of that, they got us across into festivals. 
mm. which we had no idea what we were doing with festivals. We just right. knew like we're going to submit. And Sora was the one that was like, okay, like we need a PR team. What's your press kit going to look like? What, you know, all these questions that like hadn't even hadn't even considered. We just were like, well, we're going to submit and then we will be submitting. We'll submit on the <laughs> day that we have to. That's that was our that was our kind of last um uh thought about it. Yeah, I mean from the beginning, the way that I felt about Soro was, oh, these feel like people who like films and the people who make films. Mm -hmm. And I think that both of those things are important when finding partners, especially like in relationships that are long term mm -hmm. and that involve money mm -hmm. and like conversations. If you're a person who likes people and money, but not films. Then when the rubber hits the road and I say something like, we need 10000 more dollars or we need an extra day mm -hmm. or something like that because the film is going to suffer if not. Right. They don't care. Right. They don't care. And if you have someone who likes films and money but not people, mm -hmm. then, they, then, they, then the whole process is miserable because you hate each other the whole right. time. So even if your goal is like, hey, yeah, we just want to make the most money possible, whatever, but you hate each other. Mm -hmm. So it's and wonderful. And we've had experiences mm -hmm. with all sorts of those yeah. Venn diagrams. Yeah, we have. And so I think we were bracing ourselves for like, well, if we introduce anyone else into this equation, is it going to make the process not enjoyable? But like as soon as we talked to Sora, it was very clear they they were filmmaker focused. They wanted yes. to help us make a good film. They gave us all the resources with none of the creative pressure, mm -hmm. which I can't imagine anyone having that lucky of an experience. But I hope more people get to have that kind of experience with I their hope films so too, because it was just in such a joy to be able to say like to to have someone tell us, "Here's our editors. They're giving notes. What do you think?" Like after we give you all of these resources, what step do you want to take? Instead of like, we require you to do this, this, and this. We'd worked for clients. We'd worked for, for right. people in the past who often dictated the, the creative direction of something. Um, and luckily, their creative choices were often like very spot on with ours, and we were on the same page. But just knowing that we had that flexibility with someone that's like, wow, you gave us the funds to make this, but we're not like handcuffed to a vision that we don't love. Mm -hmm. um was a just a huge miracle in and of right. itself so long story short we made a film and it was tough mm -hmm. <laughs> but um we uh so we finished editing it in October right and then we it was out of our hands and in the hands of our uh, VFX team our SFX team and our uh colorist and at that point, like we had, we like finally had a breath for like about a month and a half. Mm -hmm. And my mom even like asked me uh, for a little blurb from our family for their Christmas newsletter. And I forgot we made the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I put all these different things going on in the year and like, yeah, we've basically been like staying home. And I about press send and I was like, oh my gosh, we made, we made a, movie. a movie. We just made it so just, fast. It was like a, it was, it was like a dream, right? Fast and furious. Yeah. It was so intense. And then just like having that moment of respite, just like it was like my brain blew up a little bit. Yeah. But then I January 5th, January 6th, mm, somewhere around, somewhere there, around yeah. there, we got a, a, an email from South by South by Southwest. Right. After only receiving rejections. Yeah. That, we got rejected from Sundance, which we were anticipating. Yeah, we were anticipating. We kind of knew, but we used it as our 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 fence post regardless right. like we're going to try and get there because it was the first of a bunch of different deadlines mm -hmm. and so we just went for it you know and we we got rejected from a few other small uh lower tier film festivals so it started to really feel like okay maybe we won't be doing a festival run of any mm -hmm. kind we've um, been talking about just like what's our plan b for just like no exposure where do we go from here and festivals were different too like when south by got not south by but when sundance got back to us about with with our rejection letter they said that they how many films did they normally take uh like 200 and 270 280 or something like it was that. something in the 200 range uh -huh. and they only took 70 films yeah. that year like 70 feature films mm -hmm. um and so it started to feel too like oh so we've made a movie the worst possible year you can make a movie we as will well. not get into any right places right and so the next big one was south by southwest mm -hmm. and we assumed because that was like 
and we we I think put it on the same tier as Sundance because we knew how good of a fit it was for our film. Mm -hmm. And Sunday or South by usually does like doing more comedies and just looking at movies that have premiered there, like uh, Bridesmaids premiered at South by Southwest. Just I didn't looking, know that. Yeah. And so just looking at different films that I've idolized, I thought like, gosh, pie in the sky. Right. If we could get into South by Southwest. Right. I would just die. But it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. We were like, none of us were assuming it. So when we got the email and I like <laughs> looked down, I was like trying to order something on Amazon. And so I was like checking for the confirmation email and I saw South by Southwest and I was like, and I, I it was like three or four emails from South by at once. Ah, and so I was like the big envelope. It was the big, the big envelope. envelope. And I like opened one and just saw like, congratulations. I was like, <gasps> 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 and we were like setting up a bunk bed for our kids. So I was screaming and Stephen was screaming and our kids were screaming and they didn't know why. <laughs> but it was just like. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh! Even just relating this story, I'm I'm feeling all the feelings again of like, holy crap! <laughs> we just got into this festival, and I started crying, and uh, we yeah shared it with everybody, mm -hmm. and that was crazy. Yeah, it was really crazy. I mean, I think especially because by that point, like kind of like you said. We'd made it so quickly, it was almost like it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And then receiving all those rejection letters, which of course is a huge part of it. Yes. Huge part of anything in the film industry yeah. is just intense rejection. Yeah. Even once you make something, it's like, you not everyone's going to like it. Yeah. A lot of people probably aren't going to like it. You know, and I think the sooner that you're, you get comfortable with all of that, those various types of rejection, the better. But it was just extremely unexpected for mm -hmm. us. Extremely Extremely. <laughs> And then just, like, the world just opened up a little bit. There was, like, yeah. this giant, like, light that just filled everything. We ended up getting, like, more emails afterwards of, like, not only were we accepted, uh, we found out that week that they wanted to highlight us in a group of only, like, eight other films. Yeah. To just kind of show what what was being premiered at South by give everyone a taste because we recognized they gave us a an acceptance letter a lot earlier than we were anticipating. Oh, yeah. We were part of like the early acceptance. Group the early acceptance. So we had to keep it quiet for a little bit longer. But uh, then they announced us with only a handful of other films to say like, hey, check it out. These are some things that, that we'll be showing at South by. So because of that, because of that, we got, I think, way more exposure than we ever would have gotten if we had just like gotten in and like hoped mm -hmm. that someone would pick us out of a crowd. Sure. Um, and I think part of that was because we made COVID specific content. Um, I think actually that was probably a COVID the reason. Comedy. <laughs> we made a COVID comedy and we we recognized as we were making it that lots of people were making COVID films. It made it scarier. I mean, we, didn't, we were, were weren't sure if we reasons. should do it. Yeah, like everybody's going to be making COVID stuff right now. Like at the time I'd gotten a couple of um, random audition offers for Zoom movies and uh -huh. pandemic movies and stuff like that. They were all like, you know, horror, thriller, or, or like dramas about people who were isolated from each other mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. So it just felt like there is going to be a tidal wave. And and we, we almost thought we should pull out. Mm -hmm. But then just the feedback we've gotten since then is just that like there are hardly any comedies about COVID. Right. Because it was why extremely would you? depressing. <laughs> it's a very dark time in history. I didn't feel very lighthearted. No. But you know, we made this in spite of how we felt as like a hope, right? It was like hoping for for everyone to come together and experience something that could get us through this. And, well, and it, it was, was a relief. It was a relief to joke about it. It was a yeah. relief to write something that was lighthearted. Mm -hmm. It was a relief to try and create characters who would work through the pandemic by laughing together. Yeah. And that is kind of what we would naturally do End anyway. Doing. Most people were laughing their ways through this pandemic mm -hmm. with their trusted family members or whoever was living yeah. in their in their communities and whatever, you know, living situation. I think that it feels more like life when there's comedy involved, yeah, at least absolutely. to me. And maybe it's just because I'm a big old goof, but it's uh, it was I, a relief I, to I make. I hope it's a, a relief thing. for people to watch. 